Hey guys, how are you doing? So my name is Jeroen van Eerde. I'm a freelance logo designer and brand identity designer from the Netherlands. And um, I recently gave a talk about storytelling through brand identity visuals at a design conference here in Groningen, where I live. It's in the Netherlands. And I wanted to also share it with you guys because I think it's really insightful uh, to get to know a little bit more about my design process, I guess. And yeah, I've been working uh, a couple of years as a designer and also like a freelancer and I wanted to well summarize this uh, talk that I gave uh, recently and uh, so I was born in Amsterdam 1986 uh, on the age of four we all moved to Groningen uh, ever since we stayed here this oh, Groningen is the upper north of province uh, in the Netherlands and um, I think it's less crowded and I, I really like it a lot more here uh, instead of Amsterdam. Amsterdam is great as well, but too crowded for me. Um, so I've been doing freelance design over 10 years now and mostly focusing on uh, local design projects. I'm a father, I'm a photographer, I'm a dog owner. I have my office here at home where I'm not right now. And I studied human technology, communication, multimedia design. And I also am a photographer, which I mentioned earlier. I really like to take uh, my creative skills, which I do on the computer, also to get more outside. And uh, it really was like inspiring to me to also uh, be creative outside the door and when I'm not on the computer. So uh, I've been focusing on landscape photography, macro photography, like all sorts of photography, which you can see as well here. My daughter there on the right and on the left and uh, our dog Hugo on the middle. They are great models for me over the years. Uh, what I do uh, besides logo design as well, uh, I'm experimenting a lot and uh, finding my creative boundaries. And these are like mixed media kind of uh, designs, which I really enjoy making. Over the years, I've also been uh, asked to get involved in more, uh, well, in the design scene. And uh, I've been judging uh, for many, uh, design platforms and uh, some examples here logo lounge logo wave indigo awards and i've been active with the uh, inspiration logo inspiration uh, page from uh, instagram uh, ever since they started and it helped me really to grow my grow my grow my own uh, instagram uh, game and over the years i also got a lot of book publications uh, and it's also very good for you as a logo designer and freelancer as an individual that you get your name noticed uh, and, and get your yeah your work awarded as well so over the years i've been using uh, different platforms many platforms and i was always looking for the best platforms that really helped me to grow as a designer but also get client work uh, coming my way and the first one i want to talk about is a uh, dribble dribble is really uh I think the best platform if you want to get work for the stuff that you love doing and uh, to get noticed there because it's a modern platform and um, it's really about sharing your process with with other designers but also at the same time you're building your own portfolio there it's a really nice platform um, it's really about engaging with other designers and uh, finally if your work is good enough uh, other designers will or other clients will uh, reach out to you and uh, will hire you for, for the work that you, they love seeing what you got in your portfolio. And uh, Behance is the second uh, platform that I want to talk about. It's really similar to Dribble actually, but uh, in my experience, it's more like uh, public publishing here larger case studies and um, also engaging with the design community. But it's a little bit on a different level. Um, the fun part of this uh, side is that you can you get your work featured on specific design uh, categories. That's nice. That gives you a little bit more attention to your portfolio and your name. And um, uh, I'm not that active anymore on Behance uh, because I always feel like I have to put a lot of more efforts to the projects that I put publishing there. And it takes me maybe a full day to really publish one a project uh, and when I look at Dribble, it's only taking me like uh, an hour 
to really uh, create a good shot that I want to share. It's really about the process that I'm sharing there. And, and Behance is more likely uh, sharing finished projects and also the case study, like the process that you went through to get a, to a specific result. Uh, my office, I got a cozy office here at home where I am right now. It isn't like um, as big as I really need because I think I got everything in front of me here and every research, uh, the books I got in, behind me, there's like a small like a small library that I got there and below there. And it's really about uh, having everything around me and of course lately the internet has, is stuck with all sorts of design inspiration which I can use during my process. And um, I always felt the need to create stuff and uh, I started, before I started to become a logo designer to create poster designs and also designs such as uh, artistic kind of uh, designs and also like uh, any Warhol creations uh, for a local cafe here. Um, but I always, always felt the need to create and um, there was just one design that really changed my life and that was the FedEx logo. The FedEx logo wasn't something normal, it was like magic to me because of this part, just a small little element uh, which is called negative space, um, it's really like magic to me because there is something hidden within the typography which I didn't saw earlier and you really have to discuss, discover these elements and it was really like uh, mind blowing to me and I, I was really inspired about this logo. And so I started to learn more about logo design. So uh, in 2011, and uh, until until now, I'm still learning, of course. Um, I've been trying to get uh, more skilled about this specific thing called logo design, and I really enjoyed it over the over the years. And uh, been interacting with a lot of designers um, throughout Behance uh, and Dribble. Also been active on uh, Logo Pond and Logo Lounge. Uh, because those are like websites where you can find a lot of good resources for um, inspiration and also to interact with other designers and get to know about other local designers as well. So I've been working hard to uh, really develop my skill, my skill set, and um, yeah, at the end, I think passion and ob obsession, which I have and still got, uh, resulted in motivation and ambition to become where I am right now. So that really is like something like a formula that I think uh, designers should have to really become better and stand out a little bit more than the other competition, I guess. Uh, but there were some ob obstacles in a way uh, I needed to deal with because uh, to empower my flaws, uh, I needed to become a better designer. And uh, because I got ADD, it's like a concentration disorder, I need to simplify really everything around me. And uh, to me, like great design simplifies a complex world. Uh, and I really am happy that I found like the low design business because that was like one uh, small mark that I need to create, which needs to be really good. So I, I don't have like a lot of distractions around me. I just have to focus on one thing and to make it like stand out, stand out really good. And um, yeah, I think many of you who maybe are familiar with my, my work, know that I create a lot of logo marks and something about like using a specific letter and includes uh, smart and subtle uh, elements uh, is really like interesting to me to explore like uh, I can work with negative space and I can uh, work with like uh, specific symbols that I know that many people may know to make it easy to understand, but uh, still standing out a lot. Uh, I also created like many identity designs. You, you can see some examples from my portfolio, which are really are some of my favorites as well. Like the middle uh, logo is called Broodje van Eigendeeg. It's uh, French bakery here in Groningen and uh, it really kickstarted my career here in, in my local town so it was really like uh, my most successful identity I think that I've created over the years or nor and during my whole career actually and uh, I also do icon design I don't do that as much as I want but 
uh, I think my best skill is really in logo design and uh, but it's also nice to get hired for other tasks that I also enjoy doing uh, some of you may know if they you know me uh, you also can uh, guess that I really am into creating good uh, grid systems uh, within my logo design I really like to like uh, technically uh, do things correctly and have some also a little bit obsessed about uh, that everything needs to be in balance and sometimes I tend to break away a little bit from the grid because you want to have things optically also good of course um, but these grids really help me to keep, keep things in, in the nice order and in, in a perfect balance um, so many of you may if you know my work and if you don't know my work but uh, want to know my work more these are some of my uh, well-known uh, logos I guess and you can see that it's, those are really like colorful uh, and I've used a lot of geometrics uh, in these designs and something about using the these uh, basic shapes is really like um, it gives me like a strong feeling that I can uh, bring a, a specific element through, through these designs and really use storytelling uh, to tell a visual story with these symbols uh, next part is also like the negative spaces in logo design which I really enjoy uh, about the logo from uh, which I started with the FedEx logo there's something in there that is like a hidden meaning uh, like a, a gem inside that logo that not all viewers will notice actually in first uh, I've been using those uh, same techniques over the years as well. Not always have like the the idea of well, I'm creating now a negative space logo. It's not my intention at the start, but sometimes during a process, during some explorations, uh, these really turn out like working nicely. And uh, I can also highlight these parts. So in uh, pink, you see those uh, where the uh, hidden elements are included. Uh, like in the in the middle below you see the loaf uh, the bread the baguettes from the letter B and that's really like those small parts is really like uh, boosting my motivation I guess uh, and really uh, pay off my like uh, the things I wanted to do in my work I really like to explore those things and I really enjoy those magical moments then during my explorations when I just find out wow this is like perfect it is working and it's uh, I didn't even thought about that so sometimes I don't even sketch those things but I have to uh, really experiment it through it uh, within my illustrator to just find out if it's working or not and sometimes these uh, magical things happen uh, which I don't have even put on paper so it's really uh, nice when you are already uh, experience of course in Illustrator as well that you can easily uh, create stuff uh, and bringing new elements within these negative spaces it's really nice so also I've been using uh, I've been creating those micro style guides of the years and I think it's mostly happened in I think 2019 uh, last year I started to create these uh, micro style guides and it's really helping me to uh, have everything in just one page I, because of I have ADD, my concentration disorder, I want to have everything together because uh, I want to have things like clear to me and also like I want to understand it and I want to uh, make people uh, clear what my thoughts about the, the whole thinking process in this specific project is about. Like I, I included the, like, the identity values, I have the archetypes uh, included here. Uh, to give a little bit uh, context about what is the project about and the, the short intro the concept and building is really like to me is really important because sometimes people think yeah it's, it's maybe a tree or it's maybe a, well what can it be but I really want to explain every uh, part of this design uh, to make it more sense and uh, people can relate to it relate to it a little bit more I've got uh, more of these uh, examples that you can see here. It's also here like the square hub. There's like a, 
a letter S inside of this uh, shape. So in below you can see there's the square started, it unlocks and there forms the letter S. It's just those simple steps can really help me in telling my stories throughout my design. Also examples here. So why storytelling? Well, of course, there's also uh, always like designer signature. Every designer wants to be different. And uh, the second part is listen to a, a client vision. You can see it here because my uh, head is in front of it. But uh, it's about listen to a client vision. And I can get into that a little bit more later. First, it's all in the details. Uh, what means uh, similar to architects, photographers, or even painters, we all seek to be unique and be different and make different designs uh, in really the, the work that we love doing. So it's about standing out and uh, trying out new things, trying to innovate uh, throughout design in a world where everything has already been done before. Uh, and I've been working, well, my best to finding my own like secret formula, I guess, uh, which helped me to create new concepts and tell visual stories through it. And the next part is listen to a client vision. I often want to imagine their vision as a symbol. And it's really like using visual elements to create a meaningful symbol and make it personal and timeless. And saying timeless is more like, um, I don't want to have like one vision in mind uh, that's temporarily, temporarily, but I want to have it like, it can grow together with the company. And it's like uh, an umbrella of uh, key values included in, in this. So sometimes I have like a project uh, ongoing and um, the client has like a, a clear vision about their product and their uh, how people can interact with them. And uh, they have like, yeah, I want to have like uh, people holding a hand and uh, uh, connecting uh, with the business and to also through the projects, uh, to the products. So it's really like finding ways to uh, yeah, visualize those thinking process of the client and uh, how they see their products. Also, I've got uh, inspired by this uh, abstraction meter from Christoph Niemann. He is like a, an illustrator and uh, from a show on uh, Netflix called Abstract, he told about uh, finding a sweet spot in design to have something in the middle of the abstract meter, how he calls it. So you have start with like two realistic and on the right there's two abstracts and you have to find the sweet spot uh, so many people will understand uh, what this symbol is about and what it means and uh, that's a, a nice way to have like the well the sweet spot finding your sweet spot in design and the other on the right from Ellen Lupton it's a nice book she talks about design is storytelling and uh, which you can see here on the cover uh, like uh, the similar as uh, the illustrator Christoph Niemann talked about, uh, you can get shapes, you can refer to specific elements, and that is something that really triggers me to come up with new ideas to find those perfect sweet spots in keeping things simple, meaningful, and tell a story through these designs. Uh, I often use uh, icon finders like a website uh, in this uh, situation i want to use uh, the new project uh, it's a website you can uh, search for icons and something about these sites really helped me to uh, find those sweet spots in design as well but also the communication uh, of these designs really share a visual language because uh, when you for example when you look for communication on this side you find a lot of similar designs and sy symbols and icons on the, on this subject but it's really about finding uh, the best ones who aren't like generic uh, but uh, understandable but in a new way and uh, to get inspired from those icons has really helped me to create new and uh, well more different logos i guess uh, than i did before so that really helped me to create more uh, creative and unique concepts. And this way, I really cre created my own unique um, 
formula and uh, which helps me to create logo design ingredients. And I often have uh, clients requesting me for a, a project and they want to have a logo. And I call or I ask about uh, what logo ingredients do you have for your project? So it can help me to really uh, make clear what kind of ele elements I can include within the symbol, uh, which are meaningful for the business, for the target audience, um, and for the client as well. So uh, an example of a recent project that I created, uh, there was an old logo here, uh, Worldwide 101. It's a staffing company and they wanted to change to a different name. The different name was called Boldly and uh, they wanted to change because uh, first, when you can see at the logo right now, there is a female. Uh, there were man many females working here in this company and uh, yeah, things changed and uh, men are starting to work here as well. So they felt like uh, we don't need to only represent women only be because we want to change to a more um, white and broad uh, uh, target audience as well. And so they wanted to change and uh, yeah, the name boldly was already set and uh, I needed to come up with a way to have like combined specific elements and here you can see like I've got remote stuffing people, users, work, virtual, assistant uh, and to be friendly and uh, I gathered all those uh, tag words like ingredients that I uh, asked for and I started to sketch and um, finding solutions which can work or which can't work. I ended up with a, a series of uh, concepts and uh, we already decided that we wanted to have like a letter B, a capital letter B, but also have like, an, like in this case, I wanted to have like the vision of my clients. Uh, I wanted to find a, like a symbol for it. Uh, and that one was eventually this logo. And uh, it really was like, two hands shaking to, together like agreement because there's a staffing company. They want to have like a remote workers um, get to find work and get work and they have to uh, sign contracts and stuff. And there was like uh, also a dynamic timeline in the middle of this market. It was really, really like uh, all those ingredients that helped me to really find this mark and it was really like successful. So you can see it in a different way like this. Uh, designer Alex Sunov, I can mention it here in this post, uh, created this animation for me. And really it was like, uh, I wanted to see a user, the uh, the connection with hands shaking uh, within this mark and it really paid off. Next project is Growing Labs. It's like a supply for cultivation, analysis and extra extraction. Um, well, if you can see like the logo is like cannabis industry uh, for laboratories. Uh, they have like a supply and you can order online stuff for your laboratories. Um, but they wanted to move away a little bit from the cannabis leaf. So I started to work for them and uh, I created a, a series of concepts and uh, I wanted to include like the growing elements, the data elements, uh, maybe something from tubes or laboratory uh, elements, perhaps the letter G. And um, yeah, many uh, concepts were created and I really uh, had to mix up two, and, uh, two concepts uh, eventually, which are working great for them, but uh, they really uh, thought that the combination of these uh, were the perfect solution. So uh, eventually we ended up with this one. Growing Labs uh, is more like in, an, uh, in a more modern way to uh, write it or write it. I mean, the typography is more modern and the lab tubes is like growing. There are steps and data is playing around and also the leaves from the plants. It was like a perfect mixture uh, for the logo and it was really nice really nice to see uh, how well this way, uh, worked out. Other project, uh, Mila, uh, it's a device that you can, 
Yeah, it was like uh, thought and built by three dads who wanted a better uh, life for their family. And uh, it's uh, located in the United States and China. And it was a startup um, and the project called Mila. It was one, uh, named of one of their daughters from one of the dads. And uh, it was a device to have like a, a cleaning filter for your homes. So all the pollution that there, uh, especially in China, in the, in the, in the air, uh, they want to find a solution to have a healthy environment within those those homes and they come up with uh, Mila but they wanted to have a redesign because uh, they only like have like but you can see on here Mila was the logo uh, but they want to have a mark with it as well so uh, because it was like family and uh, things you have to put in your home they wanted to have something uh, warm and also uh, maybe referring to a heart or maybe referring to something with uh, clean air like uh, nature or, or uh, the visualization of maybe air of uh, or something else um, and we ended up with a lot of sketches and a lot of uh, concepts but eventually this uh, heart shaped uh, air rotation was really the the, the best uh, solution uh, which really worked for this uh, product because there's like a, a check mark in there as well uh, the air is rotating uh, and it ending up like ending with the no the heart shape uh, they are live on Kickstarter right now and uh, it's really nice to see like the whole project coming to life right now uh, it's really like paying off other projects, uh, Polygonia Design. I've been working with uh, my client uh, and finding a way uh, for a perfect design for his company. This is like Polygonia Design is a tool that you can use online. It's for designers. Uh, you can create your own uh, patterns with it and it's really technical and also uh, you can uh, like printing those things. Uh, and I really love the way it's, it works. It's really technical symmetrical which i really into uh, if you know my work you can see a lot of uh, symmetric shapes as well and the geometric shapes uh, but my client wants something uh, for his uh, company and uh, i was uh, thinking about uh, well the idea was to have something with polygon polygons in there maybe uh, part of creation and hexagon and there were like three concepts that i by I, well, actually, there was one concept in the, in the start, and it was like a magic wand because I felt like it's a creation tool, um, but also like you have to be creative to create those uh, patterns, and it's really about creating and uh, in a fantasy kind of way. It's like magic. Um, I felt like the magic wand was a nice touch to this whole uh, product. And to include that within a hexagon was really like working out, working out well. So on the right, you see there that's the the final uh, route, and it was really like uh, everything felt at its place. It was clean looking. The typography was also different than I usually do, uh, but my client felt like there, it it suited a lot better, and I, eventually there was a nice match. So I'm really happy and proud to see this uh, going live as well. So here I, I've also used the polygon shape, uh, the magic wand and the grabbing hand. There's like uh, in the negative space, you can like see the, the, the hands. It's a little bit abstract, but there is a hand in there, um, which gives us a nice touch. Also, this was created animation to show a little bit more about the layering uh, behind this mark that is part of a pat pattern and has always been part of a pattern because the whole product from this client was about the pattern creation so it was a nice way to show it throughout the animation next project uh, Broodje van Eigen Deeg it was my famous uh, and local uh, port project and I really am proud to yeah, uh, when this was finished I really was proud to see this logo and still am proud to see it uh, by day um, and these are like the the sketches that I created during this project, it was really like, 
I wanted to have something maybe with a letter B or uh, something with Do because Broodje van Eigen Deeg is, is Dutch for uh, bread of our own dough. So it's your own made from your own dough and uh, you can fold it and, uh, and make it different. And um, there are many concepts that I created here and uh, some were good, some were bad. And eventually during explorations uh, within my illustrator, I discovered this way to use negative space uh, in the whole design. So I never had the, uh, the logo had made on paper because it was really discovered within my computer or within my computer, within my illustrator. So that was really like uh, a magic moment for me and my uh, work that everything was falling at the right place and uh, I was really enjoying this. It was actually my first concept as well. I, uh, I secondly went also with the letter B and uh, uh, also really liked that one. Uh, there's like a, a wheat uh, plant within the whole letter B and it's like the nice balance of uh, geometric shapes in there. The third round it was like more like the whole dough concepts. I want to have it like there's like a dough it's screwing, how do you call it? Uh, rolling it uh, to make it a one uh, flat piece I guess. Uh, eventually we went to uh, with round one and it was really really uh, I was happy that they, they picked that one because I was really proud of that one and surprised uh, about the uniqueness and the, uh, the smartness of the use of the, the negative space in here. So it was the letter B, the bread with the baguette within there is well uh, from friends breads is the baguette is fa famous of course there and uh, handmade like the, the cocoarness as well it, like those classical shapes they have and it was really uh, because of the um, uh, the crafted uh, homemade uh, dough that they have, uh, it was really like a caressed personal and like uh, how do you call it? Crafted, crafted old made uh, dough uh, bread for yeah their local town. Here's a picture from the Bootje van Eigen Deeg, like uh, the outside of the bakery. A video especially pretty nice you can see a little bit about it I won't show you the whole video but you have an impression on how it looks it's really nice because they have like everything open there are windows you can see the bakers uh, create everything uh, behind the glass and they have so many nice fresh breads you, if, if you ever want uh, want to have a nice a taste of these breads you can visit them in Groningen it's really uh, I can really suggest that. So on to the next. So what I've been doing is mixing meaningful elements which empowers the client's vision. Uh, I've been talking about this uh, throughout this whole talk and uh, it's really looking for a deeper meaning in logo design and that really helped me to stand out as a designer as well. At the end uh, I wanted to have like visualize a client vision by telling their story and create a symbol uh, from that. I'm excited about to hear about your story. Thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's really about my experience, experience and uh, uh, the way I started working as a designer and uh, feel free to ask questions and uh, any other suggestions you want to see in the next videos. Bye bye.